So we want to be able to, when we get done with this, we want to graph linear inequalities, just graphing regular linear inequalities. Most of you have already done this. We have did this in uh, Math 100 or in you know, high school. Uh, graph a nonlinear inequality in two variables. This is a little more iffy, but still we should be able to do it. And then we want to use mathematical model, models involving linear inequalities. Okay. Uh, lastly, we want to graph a system of inequalities. So we've done, you know, systems of equalities, you know, linear systems and nonlinear systems. But now we want to talk about inequalities. So first thing first, what is an inequality? An inequality is anything that's not equal to, but is instead less than or greater than. Okay. So when we see the less than symbol or the greater than symbol. That means we're talking about an inequality. They're not equal. They're greater than or less than. Okay. Now, they could be equal if they've got the little equal to bar underneath the inequality sign. That also means equal to. So it could be less than or equal, greater than or equal. Okay. Uh, this is not a surprise to anybody, right? This is not like, oh, what? Oh, this is fascinating. No, this is something that everybody knows. Is everybody good on determining which is less than and which is greater than? I know this is you know, kind of elementary, but you'd be surprised at how many people still have that issue of not being able to tell the two apart. So make sure it always points at the smaller number. So this is less than because it's like, oh, you look at you, you're smaller. You know, or this one, oh, I'm bigger than you. Ooh. You know, that's <laughs> whatever you got to do in your head to remember what they are. So a solution to an inequality, okay, when you've got x and y, uh, it's going to be an ordered pair that makes it a true statement. If I plug in the x and the y value, I should get something like 2 is less than 3, you know, or negative 47 is less than 813, you know, whatever. As long as it's a true statement, then it is a solution. There are going to be multiple solutions. Every uh, system of inequalities or every uh, inequality at all in two variables is going to have many, 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 infinitely many solutions. Okay? So we're not really looking for a solution so much as we're looking for a region of solutions. Okay? So, since the graph of an inequality of two variables is the set of all points who satisfy that inequality, we wind up, ignore that, we wind up with, say I've got y is greater than x plus 3. That's all of the y values such that for every x value, this is true. Okay? Think about this as being very equivalent to y equals x plus 3. y equals x plus 3 is a line, right? So if I graph y equals x plus 3, I know that that's got a y-intercept of 3 with a slope of 1. So it looks something like that. That are all the y, that are, that is all of the y values that are solutions to y equals x plus 3, right? But I want all of the y values that are greater than x plus 3. So since y values are up-down values, that means all of the y values that are above the line x plus 3. So if that y is above it, that means that this area, this whole area above the line, everything above the line is a solution. So we can see that when we graph these, we're not getting just a line or just you know, an intersection when we do uh, systems, but we're getting an entire region that is a solution. So any point in there, any point should satisfy that equation. The only difference is, since this is greater than, it's not including the line, right? So we have to kind of tweak this a little bit, because if we're not going to include the line, then we can't have a solid line, because we know solid always indicates including. We're going to change that solid line into a dotted line. That tells us that it's all of the values above the line, but not including the line. Okay? If we had the equal to bar, that would be including the line. Okay? Now, this method of graphing inequalities always works as long as we are in this standard form, y less than or greater than mx plus b. If we can put it in that standard form, then we can graph the line, determine whether it's solid or dotted, and then determine whether we're shading above or below because of the sign. Okay? Now, there's a whole convoluted rigmarole of how to do this another way. And I'm going to show you the other way. If you choose to do it the other way, it's because that's how you were originally taught and it's just what's in your brain. 
I'm going to show you this is not the only way to do it. So if we start by replacing the greater than or equal to, less than, equal to, less than, greater than sign with just an equality, and then graph that linear equation. That gives us the line. Okay. Now, we can te choose a test point. Pick a point somewhere on either side of the line. doesn't matter which side we pick. It's just got to be a point somewhere. And we're going to plug it into our original equation. Okay. Notice we do, do not choose a point on the line. It has to be off the line. So when we substitute those into the inequality, if it's true, then we shade the area that is there, that has that point. If it's false, that means that area doesn't work. It has to be the other area, so we shade the other area. Okay? Because I know if one point in the area works, then the entire area has to work. So if it works, shade that area. If it doesn't work, shade the other area. Okay? So this is one method of doing it. The problem with this method is step number one, graph the linear equation. If I'm already going to graph the linear equation, the easiest way to graph a linear equation is to get it into y equals mx plus b form, right? Find the y-intercept, use the slope. So if I'm using slope-intercept form already, what's the point of choosing a test point? I've already put it in that standard form. I can just look at the sign and tell, OK? Here's the, here's the, the rub. This is why people like this, this method more than my method sometimes. And that's because there's one rule when we're solving inequalities. Do y'all remember the one rule that's different from inequalities and equalities? It has to do with multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Right, you have to flip the sign. And that can cause chaos sometimes because the sign is very important when we do it my way. Okay, the sign is not as important if you do it the other way because you're changing it to equals. Okay, however, remember, my method, if you're going to go ahead and solve it out for y equals mx plus b, and you're going to use the sign, if you have to multiply or divide by a negative number, make sure you flip the sign. Okay? All right, so I'm going to do this my way, and then I'm going to walk you step by step on how to do it their way. So 4x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 8. We want to graph the line first. So let's start by isolating y, getting it into the standard form, y less than or greater than mx plus b. So I need to subtract 4x. That's going to give me negative 2y greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 8. Okay? Now if I want to get y by itself, what have I got to do? Divide by negative 2, right? And I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So this is going to give me y. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2x. Positive 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Now, since I divided by a negative number, what have I got to do? i got to flip that sign. So instead of greater than, it's going to be less than or equal to. Now, if I want to graph this, what's my y-intercept? Right, negative 4 is my y-intercept. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And what's my slope? Slope is 2. Slope. Slope is 2. 2 over 1, right? So rise over run. So up 2 over 1. Now, do I get a dotted line or a solid line? Yeah, I'm going to get a solid line since it's got the equal to bar. So I just draw my solid line. Try to go through both points. Let's just erase it. Try again. There we go. All right, now, since this is now y less than my line, do I shade above or below? Shade below. It's less than. And then you're done. To me, that's the easiest way of doing the inequalities. Like I said, it's not the only way. So now let me step you through the other way, the way that the book tells you how to do it the way that your homework will walk you through it if you get lost in the homework so that you've at least seen it and it'll make sense to you. All right. So we're going to replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign. We get 4x minus 2y equals 8. Now, we can solve this line a couple of different ways. 
since 4 and 2 are both evenly divisible into 8, most of the time the easiest way to do this is by using the x and y intercepts. So if we do this by using the x and y intercepts, let's find the x intercept by setting y equal to 0. That's going to give us 4x equals 8, right? which means x equals 2. So that gives me one point, 2, 0. Now if I set x equal to 0, we can find the y intercept. So 4 times 0 gives us just negative 2y equals 8, or y equals negative 4. So this is 0, negative 4. So I have two points. That's all I need for a line, right? So if I graph that, I get that line. Now once again, is it a solid line or a dotted line? It's solid, so we leave it solid. Now, at this point, we're going to pick a test point. Generally, the easiest test point to use is the origin, unless you're going through the origin. But if you're not going through the origin, just use x and y both equal to 0. Okay? So if I do this, I get 4 times 0 minus 2 times 0, which is just 0 minus 0. So I get 0 greater than or equal to 8. Is that a true statement? No. That means that point doesn't work. That means the region above the line doesn't work, which means the region below has to. Okay? One of the regions has to work. If the top doesn't, bottom has to. So we get that shaded region. All right, which way you choose to do it, completely up to you. Doesn't really matter. They're both going to work. Okay? And some people continue to use this method after I've shown them the other one just simply because it's what they've, learned, they've known how to do. It's just repetitive, you know. And if that's fine, that's fine. There's no wrong way here. Well, there is a wrong way, but neither one of these are the wrong way. Both of them are right. Okay? Just drawing a line and shade and stuff, that's wrong. All right, so let's try one that's nonlinear. We've got x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to 16. Now, my method doesn't really work for this one because it's not linear, okay? However, this is a standard form. What kind, of, what kind of equation is this? What kind of equation is x squared plus y squared equals r squared? You all remember? It's a circle, right, with radius r. So in this case, we can, we're going to look at the circle. Say x squared plus y squared equals 16. So we know this is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 4 because this is r squared. So r is 4. So if we were to graph that, it looks like this. Now we can go back up here and say x squared plus y squared, which is our circle, has to be greater than 16, which means that the circle is going to be bigger than this circle, which means I'm going to shade what? Which one? If it's bigger than this circle, I'm going to shade outside. Right? If this had been less than, I would shade inside. Now, it is equal to, so it stays a solid line. We don't change it to a dotted line, but we are going to shade on the outside. We can do a test point. What happens if we put in that origin, 0, 0? Is 0 greater than or equal to 16? Where did 9 come from? All right, so since 0 is not greater than 16, we know that the inside doesn't work, which means the outside has to. Now, don't let this fool you. The region is everything. It's not just this box around it, right? This is kind of an ugly picture. We should actually keep on shading. everywhere. Okay? All right, so here's an application. The latest guidelines, which apply to both men and women, give a healthy weight range rather than a specific weight for your height. So if X represents your height in inches and Y represents your weight in pounds, 
the healthy weight region can be modeled by the following system of linear inequalities. Okay, so you've got 4.9x minus y greater than or equal to 165, and 3.7x minus y less than or equal to 125. We want to know, is 66, 130 a solution? So 66 is the x, that's the height. So 66, how tall is that? 5 foot 6. So a 5 foot 6 person weighing 130 pounds, is that healthy? That's what I want to know. So how do I test that? How do I test any solution to a system? Plug them in and see if it's true. Okay. So let's start by doing the first one. 4.9 times 66 minus 130. That gives us 323.4 minus 130. We get 193.4. Is that greater than or equal to 165? It's not a trick question. Yeah, it is. So we know it works for the first inequality. So now we've got to go in and plug it into the second one. Three point seven times sixty six minus one hundred and thirty less than or equal to one twenty five. Well that's three point seven times sixty six is two hundred forty four point two. So two forty four point two minus one thirty is one hundred and fourteen point two. Is that less than or equal to one twenty five? Yeah. So that means that a person that's five six and weighs one hundred and thirty is healthy by these standards. So, let's see how unhealthy I am. So, I am 6'2", so that's 74. I weigh 249. So, 74. This is a whole totally different problem than it was last year, because I was like 400 last year. So, I was like, there was no discussion about it. I was like, oh, no, you're unhealthy. So we've got to figure out if I'm healthy. I haven't done this one, so I don't know. I doubt I'm, st I'm probably still not healthy, but I'm better. So we're going to plug these in. So 4.9 times 74 minus 249 greater than or equal to 165. So let's do 4.9 times 74 is 362.6 minus 249. Well, end of, end of problem. Because I get 113.6 greater than 165. Is that true? No, I'm unhealthy. <laughs> so that's how we do that kind of problem. We just plug them in and see if we get a solution. Okay. All right. Now, when we want to solve a system of linear inequalities, this is going to involve multiple lines, multiple shaded regions. So if something's true for this shaded region and it's true for this shaded region, then I can say that the shaded region they have in common is going to be the solution to the system. Okay. So we're still going to have to graph both of them separately and find where they have an intersection at. Okay. So let's look at this system x minus 3y less than 6, 2x plus 3y greater than or equal to negative 6. So at least now we don't have to do the method of elimination or substitution. You know, we can just solve these independently and get an answer. Now you could do this, this method the other way. You could take any two equations, graph both of them and see where they intersect, and that would be a solution, right? Same type of deal. So let's start by doing x minus 3y less than 6. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graph this myself. I'm not even going to let them do it. I'm going to use my method. So if we do x minus 3y less than 6, I want to get that in standard slope-intercept form. So subtract x, <coughs> bless you, and then divide by negative 3 gives us y Flip the sign because I divided by a negative number. One third x minus two. All right, and then if I do the other one, two x plus three y 
greater than or equal to negative 6. I'm going to subtract 2x. 3y greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 6. Divide by 3. I get y greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x minus All right. So let's graph the first one. All right. So the first one has a y-intercept where? At negative 2. And then a slope of 1 third. So rise 1, run 3. Rise 1, run 3. Rise 1, run 3, whatever. Now, is it going to get a solid line or a dotted line? Right, it doesn't have the equal to bar, so it's not going to be solid. It's going to be a dotted line. Okay. Now, are we shading above or below? It's greater than, so we're going to shade above. Okay. Now, let's do this one. So where's the y-intercept on the second equation? Same place at negative 2, but our slope is now what? Negative 2 thirds. So down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. Is it a solid line or a dotted line? Solid line. And are we shading above or below? Above, because it's greater than. Now, our solution is the region that they have in common. So starting here, this is a solid line. They have that in common. This dotted line over here is the boundary. And then this area in the middle here is what they have in common. That's going to be the solution. Now when you do this on the computer, it's not going to let you graph one, graph the other, and it's just going to combine them. You know, you're actually going to have to com draw the lines first and then figure out which region is correct. Okay? You can use test points, of course. You can pick a point in every quadrant and test the regions until you find the one that works. Or you can kind of graph this in your brain or on a piece of paper and see which one it is. Okay? Totally up to you which way to do it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because that's where they what they have in common. So you're looking for something that's both blue and green. This is only green. This is only blue. This is neither. This is the only one that's both. And of course, you can test a, a point. So 0, 0. What happens if I plug in 0, 0 into the top? 0 minus 0 less than 6? Yeah. Is 0 plus 0 greater than negative 6? Yeah. So that tells me that 0, 0 works, therefore that region has to. And I know only one region is going to work, so that would be it. And that's what it will look like. That's a better picture. So, any questions on linear inequalities? All right, so, all we have, this is pretty much the bulk of what you're going to be tested on, what we've done so far. The, the two systems, three systems, uh, and then inequalities. What we're doing from here on out, we're going to do over the next one class, two classes. Do we have one or two? I think we have two classes. Over the next two classes, we're going to do binomial theorem 
and partial fraction decomposition. Now, who here is going to go on to take calculus? Okay. These two things, these two concepts are pretty important in calculus, so you want to make sure and pay attention. You're going you're gonna to forget them. You're going to have to redo them again, relearn them, but it's really important to get that first exposure to it so that when you do see it, you'll be like, okay, yeah, I remember we talked about this. Uh, I'm not going to test you on it, though, because, well, it's really convoluted and most people don't need it. Okay? So, okay, I know I asked you all this about anybody that needed to take 120. Is there anybody in here that, that needs to take Math 120 Business Calculus? If you do, I am teaching it next semester, and I'm trying to figure out who needs to take it so we can try to figure out where we need to put it in the schedule. That's why, that's why I ask. So if nobody needs to take it, no big deal. No, God no. I, statistics is witchcraft. I don't get it. There, you know what? There are some people that are, there's like kind of two camps of math. There's people that do statistics, and then there's like normal folks. Because the statistics is just, oh, I just, I, I really, really don't get it. Hypothesis testing is, it's witchcraft. Yes, Trey. Yes. Okay. No. It's a take-home test. You don't need a practice test. It is its own practice test. All right. All right. Yes. Take-home test will be ready next. It'll probably be ready Wednesday. I'll probably open it up Wednesday because then we'll only have next week to take it and get it done. So you can print it off or you can just work it out. I prefer to have it printed off. It's easier for me to grade it if everybody's paper is the same because I grade a page at a time as opposed to everybody's test at a time. Oh, yeah, it is going to be online. Never mind. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Yeah, it's online. I'm glad you said that because I was like, ooh, because it's got to be online because it's got to be graded fast because uh, we got we got to know whether you're exempt, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you're waiting on me to grade a paper, you won't graduate. Uh, so I'll have it available probably Wednesday because that's, like I said, we've covered all of the material that we're really going to cover for that test. So uh, that'll be up Wednesday, and then you'll have until the next Wednesday. Do we have class the next Wednesday? or Yes? Okay. So we'll have until probably... Probably until Tuesday. I want to. I'd like to have that taken by Tuesday, so that we can, when you come to class on Wednesday, you know what your grade is and you're you're ready for. Because we'll we'll probably do a review for the final on Wednesday. Okay. All right. Any questions on anything? Not yet. Not yet. Should be in there. Yeah.